Hello again everyone, I'm attorney Robert Flusses. In this video, I'm going to talk about what you can expect if you've been summoned to court to appear as a juror. But first, if you like my videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. When you get summoned by the court to serve as a juror, most people immediately think, how can I get out of this? You've most likely been summoned maybe once in your life and some of you may have not. You have to appear to serve, but that doesn't always mean that you'll actually serve or be required to show up. That's because most jurisdictions have a phone number that you can call or a website that you can go to to determine if they actually need you once you've been summoned. But if you're required to show up, then you're required to appear. So instead of thinking of the ways you can avoid serving, you should think of serving as a positive experience in your life because you get to watch our legal system in action. It's actually a learning experience that you'll probably appreciate and remember for the rest of your life. You can be summoned for either a civil or criminal case, but you never know that until you arrive at the courthouse and get chosen as a juror to serve on a particular case. Generally, Here's the process. When you get to court, all jurors sit in a room. If a case needs jurors, then you'll be shuffled into a courtroom and sit in the jury box. The basic facts of the particular case that you'll hear are described to you by the judge. The judge will probably start asking very simple questions like, do you know any of the parties to this case? Usually, they'll excuse you from that case if you do know someone. Then you'll go back to the jury room to see if you'll be called for another case on that day. If you're required to continue sitting as a potential juror in a particular case, the attorneys representing each party will begin asking you questions too. They'll generally be asking questions that give the attorneys a feel for who you are, like if you're employed, if you have any particular bias, and a bunch more questions. The attorneys are attempting to determine who would be the best jurors that'll serve their interest for their client on the particular case. If it's a criminal case, then the prosecutor would certainly want people who are staunch, law and order type of people. If you're a criminal defense attorney, then they want people that will not prejudge a person before all the facts are presented to the jurors. If you're selected, then the case begins. The clerk will swear in all the jurors whereby you basically promise to listen to the facts and make a decision based upon the applicable law. Then the attorneys for each party make their opening statements to the jurors. Each attorney will have the opportunity to tell you their position on the case. And this statement, though, is not evidence. They're just telling you what they want you to believe that the evidence will show. In a criminal case, the prosecutor will speak first, then the defense attorney. In a civil case, the plaintiff, that's the person suing someone, will have their attorney speak to you first, then the attorney defending the other party will speak. Once the opening statements are concluded, then the witnesses are called by each party to testify. I'm going to be discussing a criminal case and the procedure you'll see when serving as a juror. Well, the prosecution will call their witnesses first. In a criminal case, it's usually a police officer who testifies first. They'll recite the facts that they observed leading up to the arrest of a person, and that person's known as the defendant. The prosecutor can then call other witnesses. For example, in a drunk driving case, the prosecutor may call the individual who tested the blood or breath sample taken by a hospital or the police. The prosecutor may call witnesses that actually witness the alleged crime, but they have to have personal knowledge of the facts. Fact witnesses can't testify to anything other than what they actually saw or witnessed. Otherwise, that'd be hearsay and it wouldn't be considered or allowed as evidence. Documents will be submitted to the court as evidence to prove each side of the case. Remember that with each witness called by the prosecution, you'll see that the defendant's attorney has the opportunity to cross-examine each of the prosecution witnesses and vice versa, usually to try to punch holes in the witness's testimony. Once the prosecution has presented their witnesses, then the defense is allowed to call their witnesses and present their evidence to you. 
Sometimes the evidence is so overwhelming against the defendant that the defendant will cut a deal with the prosecution before the defendant even puts on his case. The jury doesn't hear that. If that happens, though, then the jury will be excused from listening to the case and you're done. If not, then the case continues in court. It's the defendant's turn now then to put their evidence on. A defendant doesn't have to testify. That's their right. And the jury will be instructed by the judge that the jury can't treat that choice by the defendant as to being any indication of guilt. During the witness testimony, you'll hear objections made regarding the substance of the testimony by the attorneys. The judge will rule on objections by either sustaining the objection or by allowing the testimony. As a juror, your job is to weigh the testimony that you heard. You're considering the credibility of the witness. You're what they call the trier of fact. The facts are presented to you and you will decide the outcome of the case. Once all of the testimony is given and any other evidence is moved into the record, then the attorneys for each side will give you their closing statements. This is where each attorney will tell you what they've proved and how you should think about that. They'll talk about the testimony of the various witnesses and whether you should believe them. They'll discuss the law that applies to the case and how you should apply it. Once the closing statements have concluded, then the judge will give you jury instructions. Those instructions will guide you on how you should decide the case. Once that's all done, then you'll be shuffled into the jury deliberation room. A foreman will be selected by the jury. Then you'll debate the merits of the case and make a decision. Sometimes, in criminal cases, the jury can't come to a unanimous decision. They'll send questions then to the judge for further instructions or clarifications. Once those questions are given to the judge, the court will discuss those questions with the attorneys for their thoughts. The judge will decide then if the questions will be answered or ignored. When a verdict is reached, then you'll be shuffled back into the jury box. The judge will ask if you've reached a verdict. The four person that you selected will read the verdict or the verdict will be read by the clerk or the judge. Sometimes the court will poll each juror to determine if in fact that was their individual verdict. The reading of the verdict ends your participation in the case and the jury is now dismissed. The judge will then thank you for your service. This is basically what you'll experience as a juror. It's a real educational experience that you'll probably think in the end was actually worth it. You may never be called again as a juror in your lifetime, but you may find it as a good topic for conversation with your friends. If you had an interesting experience being a juror, post them in my comments. I'd love to hear them. But let me know what state you're from and whether the case was a state court case or a federal court case. I'm attorney Robert Flesses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.